A true leader is not only someone who knows how to manage, but must also master language. Words, when used correctly, become a powerful weapon that can turn danger into safety and defeat into victory. History has proven that, in decisive moments, just one statement, one persuasive word at the right time, can change the entire situation. As Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Natural, fluent and confident expression is not just a basic communication skill, but a hallmark of a true leader. Becoming a leader is not just about power or title. A title can bring control, but it is the respect of those around you that turns someone into a leader. Respect not only helps a leader earn trust, but also opens opportunities for personal growth. When your team respects you, your ideas will be heard, your decisions valued, and challenges will become opportunities to demonstrate leadership abilities. In today's video, let's embark on a journey to explore eight habits that will help you earn respect from others through Stoic philosophy. These habits not only enhance leadership skills, but also help you create balance in every situation. A true leader conveys confidence without arrogance, supports but also challenges, and knows when to confront with strength and when to subtly withdraw. In doing so, they build a cohesive team working towards common goals, much like how a stoic leader balances action and reason to achieve long-term success. Habit number one. Be as big as your audience. Thoughtful leaders may find it challenging to be themselves at work, especially when self-expression means being quiet, introverted, and reflective in an environment full of extroverts. What do you do for a living? Will you lower yourself to fit in with others, or strive to rise to the level of those you lead, or simply be yourself? As for me, I will consider the benefits and limitations of being true to oneself, as well as when to consider changing one's style to fit the environment and those around you. In communication, especially when you're speaking to a large group, it's not just about what you say, but also how you say it. When you face a crowd, you need to be as large as that crowd, you can't shrink back in these moments, but rather expand in voice, gesture and demeanor. In situations where you are challenged, remain calm, as Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is particularly important when others seek to provoke you. Though you may be provoked by the cavalry, as in a fierce battle, you cannot allow yourself to fight back. Sometimes, patience and endurance are the most admirable qualities of a true leader. Those who follow you will endure challenges and losses, but you cannot afford to be pensive or silent in such moments. A prime example of strength in communication can be seen in Thomas Shelby, the main character in the series Peaky Blinders, when he speaks, the first thing you notice is not just the words, but how he chooses them. Thomas's short, powerful and direct words not only silence others, but also create an aura of authority around him. He never wastes words, yet each one carries weight. This is the crucial point for a leader. Silence itself can be a powerful form of communication. As a leader, you don't always have to be yourself, but you must learn to be as large as your audience. Amplifying hand gestures when speaking to a larger group is a simple yet effective way to expand your presence. This doesn't mean losing your authenticity, 
but learning to combine authenticity with image. You don't need to completely change your nature, but you need the flexibility to adapt to the circumstances, as respect from others comes not only from what you say, but also from how you present yourself. Habit number two, show conviction with just your tone and your statements. Have you noticed that people who speak with persuasion and passion can engage their audience more effectively? Persuasive speakers not only capture attention, but also strongly influence and convince those around them, guiding them on the journey they've mapped out. In this process, words not only convey information, but also communicate belief, power and persuasion. This aligns with the philosophy of Stoicism. Speech is not merely a tool for expression, but a means to shape how others feel and act. A great leader needs to have profound belief, and it is the power of persuasion in their words that sets them apart. In times of uncertainty, when everything seems to be falling apart, a person who can speak with certainty and calm becomes a symbol of stability. They bring reassurance to those around them because their confidence in every word is the result of deep and unwavering belief in the path they have chosen. When we believe that the leader has chosen the right course of action, we are more inclined to trust and follow them. So, how can we speak with certainty? This confidence doesn't come from what we say, but from how we convey it. A conversation can be profoundly shaped and impacted by our tone, rhythm and body language rather than just specific words. Imagine this scenario. If someone says happy birthday in a sad, slow tone, reminiscent of Hank Williams' song, I'm so lonesome I could cry the greeting will undoubtedly feel out of place and leave the listener feeling confused. Conversely, if we say the same birthday wish with enthusiasm and cheer, the listener will sense genuine warmth and positive sentiment. This is clear evidence that tone and delivery play as important a role as content itself. When aiming to persuade or build trust, Pay attention to how you speak. Confidence is conveyed through a steady tone, natural rhythm, and an open attitude. This makes it easier for the listener to receive and trust your message, fostering a more effective and stronger connection in the conversation. Speaking persuasively is a crucial skill, but it's not just about choosing the right words. It's about using tone, body language, and pauses to create engagement. When you lower your voice and slow down, you create an atmosphere of quiet but powerful authority. The pauses between words often become the most compelling moments. It's a way of speaking without speaking, where the audience is drawn into every word you utter because they are eagerly waiting for what you'll say next. To build this habit, practice using strong vocal techniques, such as speaking at a slower pace and strategically adjusting your volume. This not only helps you feel more confident, but also creates a sense of security and persuasion for the listener. When you speak with greater control, you can master the conversation, fostering stronger understanding and connection. The next habit you need to focus on to maintain your influence is sustaining eye contact, even in moments of conflict. Maintaining eye contact is not just a sign of respect, but also an affirmation that you are present and ready to face whatever comes your way. Habit number three, hold eye contact even during conflict Making eye contact isn't always easy. At times you might feel self-conscious, especially if you haven't yet established a connection with the other person. But why is eye contact so important in the first place? 
When we hold eye contact during tense or challenging moments, it's more than just an act of bravery. It's an expression of respect. It shows that we are listening, that we are not avoiding the situation, and that we are willing to face it head on. Stoic philosophy, which encourages us to confront challenges calmly and with self-control, supports this approach. As Marcus Aurelius said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. Be different and stronger than those who let emotions overshadow reason. Maintaining calm, steady eye contact in every situation conveys self-control and inner strength qualities a true leader needs. Body language is our natural way of communicating without words, done almost like an unconscious reflex. When we face someone, it is through eye contact, posture and tone that the strongest messages are conveyed. Eye contact, in particular, has a unique power. It shows interest and enables deep connection. We are naturally drawn to those who give us attention through eye contact. It's a subtle affirmation that we are valued and that our thoughts and feelings are being heard. When your gaze meets someone else's, especially in a tense conversation, it is a gentle signal that you respect the dialogue, even if you disagree with what the other person is saying. Insignificant talks, like those on TED stages, we often see speakers building rapport with the audience by maintaining eye contact. They look directly into specific faces, transforming a general speech into a series of personal connections, making each audience member feel truly important. Dr. Brené Brown, for example, requested the stage crew at TED to keep the lights on so she could see everyone. She said, when I finally walked onto the stage, the first thing I did was make eye contact with several people in the audience. I needed to feel connected. This not only helped calm her, but also fostered a close, genuine atmosphere, making her message more heartfelt and relatable. Eye contact is one of the best ways to convey interest and establish a connection. So, what about you? Do you think eye contact influences how others perceive you? Share your thoughts in the comments. Habit number four, be non-reactive to hostility. In the film Peaky Blinders, Thomas Shelby is the perfect embodiment of a leader who remains calm in the face of adversity. He faces highly stressful situations where most people would lose control, but Thomas always maintains an almost chilling calm. This not only demonstrates his confidence, but also sends a powerful message that he is fully in control of the situation. A standout example is the scene where he casually speaks when confronted by a threat from his enemy. That's why he was chosen, I was chosen, I was chosen, can the chosen one have a smoke? That nonchalance isn't just a humorous detail, it highlights Thomas's extraordinary level of composure. It's the kind of calmness that isn't easily achieved, and it's what makes him shine as a respected leader. In Stoic philosophy, this could be interpreted as a non-reactive to hostility approach. When you don't let emotions take over and don't react the way your opponent expects, you earn respect not only from them, but also from those around you. This calmness gives you leadership strength, a power that doesn't come from authority or threats, but from self-control and inner stability. However, it's important to note that this calmness is not fake. It isn't a mask to hide in a fear or panic. On the contrary, it is the result of self-discipline, developed to foster deep confidence. To become a truly respected leader, 
you need to cultivate the ability to maintain balance and composure when facing challenges. This not only helps you overcome the situation, but also inspires others who see you as a symbol of steadiness and stability. One habit you can learn from Thomas Shelby to attract attention and respect, especially in large groups, is the way he controls the pace of his speech. Let's now focus on the importance of speaking slowly and using pauses between words. This not only gives you better control over the message you want to convey, but also adds weight and significance to every word you say. Habit number five. Speak slowly and use pauses between words. I, um, uh, basically, actually, you know what I mean. How many times have we heard this? No, actually, we don't really know what you mean. These filler words are the product of uncertainty and lack of control in communication. When writing, we have the opportunity to edit and streamline our thoughts to achieve clarity. But when speaking, everything happens quickly and can be harder to manage. Filler words not only dilute our message, but also distract the listener and weaken our persuasiveness. Stoic philosophy always emphasizes calmness and control in every situation. When applied to speaking, this means speaking slowly and incorporating pauses, a key technique to command respect. When you speak slowly, you prevent interruptions. People tend to interrupt when they feel there's an opening and a speaker who rushes or abandons their thoughts midway makes it easy for others to take over. But when you control your pace, confidence and authority emerge. You don't need to rush to complete your sentences because you're in control of the conversation. Barack Obama is an exemplary figure in mastering the art of pausing. Most people speak at a pace of 150 to 190 words per minute. But Obama uses only about 90 words per minute with long, meaningful pauses. This not only strengthens his message, but also highlights each significant point, as described by Richard Newman from UK Body Talk, who likened Obama's use of pauses to highlighting your words with a marker. Each word is emphasized, creating a special focus for the listener. Speaking slowly and clearly is not just a way to hold the listener's attention, but also a way to convey confidence and authority in communication. Great leaders don't just speak to convey a message. They use their voices to command respect. When a leader speaks slowly, all eyes are on them and they hold control not only over the dialogue, but also over the listener's emotions. The power of speech comes from the confidence in each word. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Confidence doesn't stem from speaking more, but from speaking selectively and at the right moments. When you know how to use pauses, every word you say becomes powerful and leaves a lasting impact. In important conversations, speaking slowly and pausing invites others to listen and respect you. No rushing, no filling the gaps with meaningless words. This is the hallmark of a leader who commands respect through voice and language. Habit number six, carrot and stick approach to motivation. All right, let's move on to habit number six. Let me tell you, mastering this skill can truly make you stand out like a star in the eyes of those around you. Consider the issue from the perspective of stoic philosophy. Success is not something you receive. It's something you create for yourself. And sometimes, 
Creating means applying clever motivational tactics like the carrot and stick method. This approach helps you achieve major goals such as a promotion or a raise by using both rewards, the carrot, and pressure, the stick, to build confidence and determination in negotiations. Practically speaking, this strategy encourages you not only to prepare clear commitments with your superiors, but also to have an additional negotiation edge. This might be other job offers you've sought in advance to strengthen your position and create leverage when needed. Many people tend to feel apprehensive in negotiations due to a lack of confidence or fear of losing their current role. However, confidence can be built especially when you know you're preparing the best options for yourself. A classic example is Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Motor Company, who effectively applied this strategy to motivate his team. Ford introduced significantly higher wages, a carrot to reward high performance, which set his company apart at a time when such salaries were rare. This wage increase encouraged employees to give their best, enhancing both loyalty and productivity. In addition to financial rewards, Ford established clear standards and implemented his strict stick rules to ensure discipline and maintain consistent quality. Employees who did not meet expectations faced consequences. Reinforcing the company's standards. The combination of positive incentives and clear consequences created a work environment where employees were motivated to achieve high performance and understood the importance of maintaining standards. Ford's approach not only inspired his team, but also contributed to the company's long-term success by building a dedicated and productive workforce aligned with the company's goals. Now that you understand how to use motivation to propel yourself, take the next crucial step. Demonstrate a strong conviction in your words. Firm and resolute speech has the power to transform how others perceive you. Habit number seven shows conviction with your words. Speaking with confidence is an incredible skill that can create a powerful impact in your personal and professional life. When you speak with firm conviction, you not only convey a message, but also radiate passion, confidence, and authenticity. This certainty has the power to inspire and motivate others to take action. In Stoic philosophy, assertiveness in speech is not just a communication tool, but a medium to reflect inner strength and calmness in every situation. It allows others to see your composure and poise in every word you utter. Just one more step and you will change the way you live enabling you to change the world. A clear, determined statement can ignite emotions and instill strong belief in the listener. Beyond choosing words skillfully, you can express assertiveness simply through your tone. A steady, strong tone makes words sound decisive and genuine, while a soft, weak tone often conveys uncertainty to the listener. Unfortunately, many people unknowingly undermine the power of their words by ending sentences on a rising pitch, turning assertive statements into hesitant questions. This not only lessens the impact of the expressed opinion, but also creates an impression that the speaker is uncertain about themselves. The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. For Epictetus, confidence and self-assurance are foundational to achieving one's goals. If you believe in your worth and your words, not only your actions, but also your speech will reflect that strength. Through each assertive word, 
you build the image of a determined person, creating an irresistible attraction for others. A notable example of a powerful speech can be seen in Steve Jobs' inspirational commencement address at Stanford University in 2005. With a warm, sincere voice and powerful words, Jobs shared three personal stories from his life, encouraging students to live authentically and passionately. He said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. These words compelled the audience not only to listen, but to deeply reflect on their own lives. By delivering a message with a strong tone and choosing a simple yet impactful language, Steve Jobs affirmed the importance of pursuing one's path, living with passion, and not allowing fear to hold them back. This was more than just a speech. It was a call to action, urging the audience to relentlessly pursue their values and make the most of their precious time. Practice speaking with confidence, spreading belief and strength to those around you. Don't let any hesitation undermine the power in your voice. Starting today, speak with determination by leaving a comment saying, I can do it. This will not only earn you respect, but also create a positive impact on your life journey. Habit number eight, have slow, relaxed movements. We are witnessing a global movement toward a slow lifestyle, a way of living imbued with philosophy and humanity. The slow living movement encourages people to decelerate in this fast paced world where everything from fast food to high-speed internet pushes us into an endless spiral of haste. This fast pace makes time seem to fly by, leaving us feeling that life slips through our fingers like a fleeting dream. Some people have noticed this and have begun to adopt a slower pace, focusing on sustainable values and fully savoring the precious moments in life. This movement originated as a form of resistance with the slow food movement, for instance, founded by Carlo Petrini and activists in response to the opening of a McDonald's in central Rome. They defended local culinary traditions and sustainable values and inspired the world with the message of slow living. Writer Carl Honoré expanded on this concept in his book In Praise of Slowness advocating for slowness as a way to recreate a life of depth and meaning. In this context, the demeanor of a true leader aligns with these values, reflected in the way they move and communicate. When we move slowly and comfortably, we create a space of peace and confidence for ourselves and those around us. A leader with calm gestures communicates to others that they are neither fearful nor pressured. The way they enter a room, place each step or extend a hand to address an issue, exudes a sense of steadiness and resolve. Those with a composed manner are often less affected by environmental pressures. They seem to assert that, no matter how rushed the world may be, they will maintain their inner stability. Seneca, one of the renowned Stoic philosophers, once said, he who is brave is free. This freedom allows one to move slowly and retain composure even when facing challenges. This is the image of a true leader, a person who remains unaffected by external circumstances, unhurried by the tempo of the outside world. When you are calm and unhurried, you instill a sense of safety and stability in those around you. For others, this is a sign of mental strength and absolute self-control. They will start to respect you, not only for your words, but for your demeanor. Slowness becomes an unspoken statement. I am not swept up in the frenetic flow. I stand firm in my values. Looking back at the habits discussed in this video, we can see that communicating as a leader is not merely about the way you speak, 
but also about how you demonstrate understanding, confidence, and self-control. These are all core qualities in Stoic philosophy. A true leader is not someone who seeks respect through empty words, but someone who lives an upright life, consistently aligning their actions and thoughts. By embracing and applying Stoic principles, you will gradually learn to speak with sincerity, calmness and conviction, naturally building respect from those around you. Controlling your words and actions is essential to cultivating a genuine leadership presence. Instead of trying to change others, focus on changing how you approach people and situations. So, what do you think is the biggest challenge in striving to communicate like a leader in daily life? Have you ever found yourself wanting to speak calmly but were instead influenced by your emotions? Feel free to share your answers below. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on more inspiring content. Click on the videos at the end of the screen to continue exploring more valuable Stoic lessons.